In part 2, we used textures and UV coordinates to modify the appearance of a couple of basic meshes. In part 3, we are going to learn about transparency and alpha clipping. Transparency is handled a bit differently to opaque objects. For efficiency reasons, when rendering opaque objects, you tend to draw them starting with the closest object, because anything behind that object doesn't need to be drawn at all. It's obscured by the closer object and you get an efficiency win. Transparent objects, on the other hand, need to blend their colour with the colour of the object behind it based on the alpha value of the object. This is called alpha blended transparency. First, that means all opaque objects need to be drawn first before any transparent objects are drawn, otherwise we can't do any colour blending. Unity enforces this with a queue system whereby all shaders are assigned a queue number, and lower numbers are drawn before higher numbers. In code shaders, we specify the number manually, but ShaderGraph will handle that for us. Second, it means that transparent objects are rendered back to front, with the furthest objects drawn first, and objects closer to the camera drawn later. This ordering ensures that overlapping transparent objects get their colours blended properly. A front-to-back ordering would give incorrect results. So how do we use transparency in shaders? I am going to start with a graph named transparency example, which is the same as the texture example shader from part 2, without the scrolling UVs for simplicity. By default, graphs use opaque rendering. To change this, go to the Graph Settings tab on the Graph Inspector, and you will see an option named Surface Type. Change it to Transparent using the drop-down menu, and you'll see an extra block appear on the output stack called Alpha. Earlier I referred to Alpha Blended Transparency. In most image editing tools, you will work with RGBA colour values. RGB is easy enough to understand, red, green, and blue. But alpha is this sort of extra weird value which just means how transparent the pixel is. We need to wire something up to this alpha output. You will notice that the base colour output takes a vector 3 because of the 3 in parentheses here, but we are passing a vector 4 from this multiply node. This multiply actually contains an RGBA colour, and Unity is automatically truncating the vector. It's losing that last component when we connect it to something that only expects three components. We need that last component for the alpha output, so I will drag out a new wire from the multiply node and add a split node. As you can see, it splits the vector 4 into its components. We can then wire up the A component to the alpha output, hit save asset, and come into the scene view. When we attach the material to an object and change the alpha value on the base colour property, we can see the transparency working as expected. We've now seen basic transparency, but that's not the only use of alpha. Sometimes you don't actually want semi-transparency. Sometimes you just want parts of an object to appear opaque, and other parts to be cut away and not rendered. Sort of like a visibility mask, or like a cookie cutter. This is where alpha clipping comes in. With alpha clipping, we can set a threshold, and any pixel with alpha below the threshold gets cold. It's not rendered. Let's see how it works in ShaderGraph. I'll duplicate the transparent example shader and name the new one alpha clip example. If we go to the graph settings once more, I am going to change the surface type to opaque. Then I'll tick the alpha clipping box. A new output block called Alpha Clip Threshold will pop up, which is the threshold I mentioned. In fact, I'm going to just leave it how it is, smash that Save Asset button, and go into the scene view. To demonstrate how alpha clipping works, I'm going to assign this texture to the material. It's a fully white texture, but the alpha gets lower the further from the center you get. If I put it on this cube, then each face renders as a smaller circle, because the outer parts of the texture have alpha values below the threshold. Back in ShaderGraph, 
I'll add a new fluid property called Threshold and attach it directly to the alpha clip threshold output. In the node settings for the property, we can change the mode to slider, which gives us the ability to restrict the range of values that we can set for this property. The default min and max values of 0 and 1 are perfect. Hit save asset again and in the scene view, we can play around with the slider to make the circles bigger or smaller. Great. Let's make one more shader in this tutorial. Full on alpha blended transparency can be expensive, especially if you have lots of objects due to the blending. Opaque objects that use alpha clipping have the ability to cool pixels, but each pixel that is drawn is opaque, so it's still pretty efficient. There's a technique I like called dithering, where we can fake transparency by culling pixels in a dithered pattern. So on a screen with sufficient resolution, the object still sort of appears transparent. Let's see it in action in ShaderGraph. I'll start by duplicating the alpha clip example shader and name the new one dither example. I'll get rid of the threshold property and delete the node going into alpha clip threshold. ShaderGraph has a dither node which I'll add. It generates a dither pattern as you would expect. If we change the in value to 1, you'll see the pattern in the preview, although it's a bit blurry if we zoom in, so here's a crisper version. You will also notice that it takes a screen position as its second parameter, rather than a UV coordinate. That means this pattern will be applied in screen space, rather than over the surface of the object. That's perfect for our use case. We can wire this node directly to the alpha clip threshold output, hit save asset, come back to the scene view, and now, if we play around with the alpha components of the base colour property, the object sort of looks like it's fading out, but every pixel that is being rendered is still opaque. In the next part, we'll be exploring the depth buffer and effects like silhouettes. My biggest thanks to the Patreon supporters who should be appearing on screen right now. Subscribe today for perks such as early access and free assets. Until next time, have fun making shaders.